Hi guys, how you doing? It was a beautiful day today, so I, on the spur of the moment, decided to go out and film a video for you. I went to Brookwood Cemetery, which is in Surrey, in the UK. It is both a civilian cemetery, uh, large, very large, and also it's the largest UK military cemetery. There are, there are somewhere in the region of 6,000 graves there. Uh, it's, that half at least is maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and they do a fantastic job. I was using a different camera from usual and as you would expect, turns out I messed up a little. So uh, the intro that I thought I'd filmed when I got there, uh, I didn't film at all. I don't know what happened, but I don't have it. And, and so I thought I'd pop out and record a little intro. So I was there very specifically to look for one grave in particular in the civilian cemetery, but it was too good an opportunity to pass up on, to have a bit of a walk around and look at some of the war graves that are there. So I'll stop talking and we'll get straight over to, to Brookwood. Uh, before I move on from this section, I just want to draw your attention to these down here. I think these deserve special mention. Um, I don't know if you can see that the, the stones are a slightly different shape and uh, they go on for quite a long way as well. Those are all gravestones of Polish servicemen who died protecting England. There's a lot of fuss at the moment, there's a lot of uh, almost racist talk in the run-up to Brexit uh, about foreigners and people coming here and you know taking our jobs, taking our benefits, whatever it is that these people are supposed to be doing uh, and I think it's very important that we take a moment just to acknowledge the sacrifice that they made for us. Uh, this isn't just English people, this is people from all over the world. There are people from India, there are people from Poland, from Czechoslovakia, from, uh, from Canada, from America, pretty much anywhere you can think of, Australians, New Zealanders, they're all here. And they're all dead. And they all died in service of the same thing. So, uh, you know, thought it was important to say. So we've just come through into a separate section. We've left the Polish, the Canadian, and, um, and some English grows behind. And we've come into this section here, which again, goes on for, well, goes on for a long way. Uh, these are all American graves, as you can tell from, from the flag that's flying behind me. Let's have a little look. Sorry, the sun's in my eyes when I face this way. There we go, got a decent view of the flag there. Um, these are for our American brethren who died in aid of a war that was effectively European until, uh, until they joined in and made it a world war. So a lot of people sacrificed their lives from America. Um, thank you. We're up in the corner of the next area after the American section. And what we've got here is quite an interesting area because we've got what are clearly German graves. These are from those in the, the German Air Force who were shot down over the UK during World War II and they're buried here in the same cemetery. Um, one of the things that's quite shocking when you look round is that an awful lot of these graves, I don't know if you spotted this already, but I'll show you this one here. Each person has their own stone, but here we have three stones all together in one grave, which effectively means that it was impossible to separate, separate out, which effectively means it was impossible to separate out three separate people. We knew there were three people there, but we couldn't separate them out, so they were buried together in the same grave. And if you look round, you'll see a huge number of double or even triple graves. Uh, and sadly, there's a, even these go on a long way. As we come down towards the far side 
of this area. We're no longer in the German section. These are all British airmen. Or indeed British soldiers. But again, it was impossible to separate their remains from those of their comrades. Um, and even down, down here, these are First World War. And we have lots and lots of them all together. Which, when you think about it, is heartbreaking, really. It meant that <laughs> losing, losing their family wasn't, wasn't the end of it. They couldn't even have an individual burial. And as you look along these, it just goes on and on and on. In one corner, tucked away, is, is a small group of graves, which quite interestingly are uh, on a different alignment to the rest of the cemetery. If you look over behind me, you can see that all of these graves are lined up to match. And that, follow, that holds true, whichever section in, they all follow the same alignment. But over here in the corner, there's a small group that are facing slightly differently. And when you look at the names, the reason why becomes a little more obvious. There's Arif Khan, the Balak -like Light Infantry, died on the 22nd of July 1915. Marup Shah, 1915. Sikandar Khan. These are all clearly Muslim graves. These are Muslim soldiers that gave their lives for us. Which again, is probably something that's worth, worth mentioning at the moment, with the current sentiment in the in the West, that it hasn't always been that way. But the other interesting thing is that the person that we are here looking for is definitely going to be in an Islamic grave. So we're going to leave the military section now and we're going to see if we can find him. So we're now out of the military cemetery and we've come over to the Muslim area of the civilian cemetery to see if I can find a very specific grave. Uh, this place is big, so it might take me a while, but I know it's here because I've seen it before. One of the things that I failed to take into consideration uh, when deciding to film this was the fact that I'm walking through a graveyard looking for a specific grave and they're all facing the other way. Which doesn't make it easy. Well, I'm still walking and I've pretty much got to the end of the Muslim graves. I'm not quite at the end yet, but I'm beginning to suspect been here before but it was a little while ago and I don't remember exactly where it is so I was kind of relying on on the fact that I'd probably recognize it when I got there and it looks like I didn't uh, so we'll turn around and we'll go back the other way but at least this time we'll be facing in the right direction one of the things that makes this a little bit trickier is the fact that there are quite a lot of relatively recent graves here as well there are obviously family plots and there are there are families here visiting the graves of their deceased relatives. Another train. Which does mean that me wandering around, poking at graves, trying to find the one I'm looking for, might be a little bit insensitive. 
So there's a possibility, I suspect, that I, I might never actually find it. But I'm going to keep trying for now. And in a lovely touch of irony, I'm back exactly where I started. And it seems that going that way was a mistake because uh, I've been there and back and I haven't been able to find it. So we're guessing that it's probably this way. So that's where we're going to go now. So the battery's just died in my little handheld camera. So I have switched to my phone. I hope the quality's good enough. Uh, I don't know if this is going to record a camera. Another train. Can we see it? <sighs> so, as I was saying, I've switched to my phone. I've plugged the little mic in. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to record the audio properly, but we'll see. So the audio might be terrible on this, uh, but we'll see. Um, but I've walked significantly further than I did before, and I'm now getting right towards the end of the, uh, the Islamic section of the, the, uh, the graveyard. There's quite an interesting thing over here. A few of these graves look like they've been graffitied on, which is a little bit uh, worrying. It's a bit disturbing if we come over here. There's one here, and there's another one over there. I don't know why they've been painted out, but that's a bit odd. But, um, oh, hang on a minute. You see that one over there with a metal plaque on it? That looks really familiar. I think that might be what we're looking for. Let's go and have a look. Oh, you beauty. Yep. This is the grave of the Right Honourable Roland George Allenson, Allenson Wynne, 5th Baron Headley. Oh, for sake, another train. Anybody would think this was the main line to London. It, it is, by the way. Do you know what? I think you're just going to have to put up with the train noise, to be honest. R.G. Allenson Wynne wrote a fantastic book called Boxing. He, was, he went to Cambridge. Um, he was a very well-off gentleman, as you might expect, with the name and the title that he has. Uh, and he won the middleweight boxing championship. Or was it the lightweight? Anyway, he won at one weight, uh, and the year after decided to step up the weight because it was too easy. So he stepped up the weight and carried on fighting at his original weight. He didn't get any heavier. He just decided to fight heavier opponents, uh, and he won that too. Um, and he did all sorts. He was a swordsman and a boxer, and he wrote a fantastic book. If I could only ever have one book on early boxing, it would be his. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, so anyway, here we are at his grave. There's not a lot more I can tell you about him here, but take a look. So if ever you find yourself near Brookwood, which is not far from Woking in Surrey, then pop up, say hello to R.G. Allenson Wynn. Now, of course, we have to find our way back to where I parked the car, which is easier said than done, because I'm not really sure where I am anymore. Oh, I can see some military graves. If we look, look over my shoulder, you should be able to see in the distance behind me, a stack of military graves, so we'll go and see. Oh, here's a gate. Oh, and lovely. It's chained. Is that a little foot gate by the side? Let's go and have a look. Ah, oh, a dead jay. How delightful. Oh, it's looking good. Oh, no more walking miles for me. Okay, we're not far from where we started now, and uh, 
If you look behind me, you'll see a bunch of graves. We were filming on the other side of that set of graves down there. There's a lot of them. They were the ones that are from the Canadian forces. And we now, we've come out through the gate, right in the middle. And it kind of lets you see how many there are. I hope that video was entertaining is probably not the right word, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, my knee really hurts now. It's quite swollen. Um, but do you know what? I'm, I'm still really glad I went. It was, it was a lovely day to be out and about, and it was fantastic to see Alan St. Wynn's grave. And it was a bit of an eye-opener to see some of the, the military graves there, the scale of the place. And the fact that this is one of many, and it might be the largest in the UK, but there are certainly larger ones across Europe. Um, some of the, the cemeteries in France are just, just mind-blowing. So anyway, thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon. I'm, I'm extremely grateful. And if you're able, a pledge of $10 a month or a couple of dollars a video goes a really long way. Take care. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.